Hello and happy Friday. WebCME wants you to start your weekend with a win. The Clinical Connection Friday feature is transcutaneous oxygen measurements and hyperbaric oxygen therapy in the management of the diabetic foot ulcer. Following a recent WebCME hyperbaric hybrid training session where we talked at length about hyperbaric indications and the requirements to qualify for therapy found in the NCD and LCD documentations, I received this follow-up question. Dr. Nisgoda, please look at the attached CMS billing requirements, specifically the highlighted area. It appears that unless TCOM is performed on diabetic wound patients, CMS will not consider that they have met medical necessity. So, we should not treat until this is performed? The clause that was being referenced states, failure of transcutaneous oxygen measurements to demonstrate adequate local blood flow to affect improvement when treating diabetic wounds of the lower extremities will result in HBO treatments to be considered not medically necessary. Now this question is excellent and the concern valid. TCOM or transcutaneous oxygen measurement is accomplished by placing a Clark electrode on the skin. This electrode then detects and measures the amount of oxygen diffusing through the skin. TCOM has been used for years clinically to assist in determining tissue perfusion, the potential for healing, as well as the response to oxygen, especially hyperbaric oxygen therapy. TCOM is only one non-invasive measurement of tissue perfusion. Others include ankle brachial index, skin perfusion pressure, and duplex ultrasonography. The CMS policy does not mandate TCOM, but rather speaks to the requirement to document adequate blood flow to the wound, which can be accomplished by other means, such as the non-invasive testing or formal angiography. It does not say TCOM must be performed. However, if you perform TCOMs and the values are low, i.e. less than 30 millimeters of mercury, and you cannot demonstrate augmentation with oxygen challenge, then HBOT may be considered medically unnecessary because the patient does not have adequate tissue perfusion. And this is certainly clinically appropriate. All the hyperbaric in the world is not going to be particularly beneficial to a patient without adequate blood flow and tissue perfusion. Well, that's this week's win. Thanks for joining us. We hope this clinical correlation will enhance your wound care practice. Be sure to send us your questions and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn. Enjoy a safe and relaxing weekend. Hello and welcome to Hyperbaric Medicine Principles and Practice, second edition. I'm Dr. Jeffrey Nisgoda and I am honored to be serving as your course director. WebCME is proud to be offering the second edition of this course. We have enhanced the quality of the video presentations and completely updated the course curriculum, including regulatory policies, administrative perspectives, and clinical content. Here we are in our treatment room this patient had a squamous cell carcinoma that was irradiated. This course is your gateway to the clinical practice of hyperbaric medicine and is endorsed by the American College of Hyperbaric Medicine. Completion of this training satisfies the criteria established by CMS for introductory didactic education and training. At the conclusion of this educational activity, you as a student of this course should be able to recognize the scientific basis of hyperbaric medicine and apply this understanding to patient care. Discuss the clinical applications of hyperbaric oxygen therapy. We're trying to understand if our patients are gonna heal. We're trying to understand what the best course of action for them is. 
employ therapeutic approaches in hyperbaric medicine and wound care. Uh, because we, sometimes we don't recognize the severity of a chronic wound. Acute wounds uh, heal in a normal fashion. It's, it's, it's the wounds we are all familiar with. You fall, you cut yourself. Understand the operational components of a hyperbaric chamber and the importance of safety and fire policies and procedures. You need to ensure that the carbon dioxide detector is functional. You need to make sure that your bib system is not contaminated. Integrate the knowledge and understanding of hyperbaric medicine you have gained through didactic lectures and clinical case presentations throughout this course into your clinical practice and care of patients. This course offers practicing physicians, mid-level practitioners, nurses, and other allied health professionals a comprehensive overview of hyperbaric medicine, including the evaluation and management of a hyperbaric medicine patient, as well as insight into the operations of a hyperbaric facility. We utilize a team approach to enrich the delivery of the content and we feature clinical correlations with case studies and practice pearls in an effort to enrich your educational experience. 64 minutes at that depth, at 40 feet. This course is designed to optimize your learning. We encourage you to review the segments as often as you need to ensure your understanding of the content. This is something that cannot be achieved in a live classroom setting, thus making this experience optimal. On behalf of the entire faculty of Hyperbaric Medicine Principles and Practice, I would like to welcome you to our course.